Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the verbiage that uh, we as physical therapists speak of. Um, the first level is standby assist, so that's kind of the independent level. You're just next to them within an arm's length. In case they do stumble or lose their balance a little bit, you're able to assist them. So then you can provide uh, verbal cues as well, which we'll get into on the next slide. And then the next four levels are all physical, so you're actually touching the individual hands-on assist. Contact guard would be either hand on a gate belt or hand, hand over hand or on their arm, however the individual works best with you. And then minimal, moderate, and maximum all describe the level of assist that you're giving. So minimal is you as the caregiver are giving about 25% or less of their body weight. So you're assisting, if you have a 100 pound individual, you're assisting at max 25 pounds that you're moving. Um, once we get into the moderate and maximum levels, that's kind of when you want to start thinking about the assistive devices that we saw earlier today, and we're going to go over a few more with you in a little bit during this presentation as well. Um, moderate and max is really when you as a caregiver are more at risk for starting to get injured, and uh, we want to prevent that as much as possible. Stephanie? Yes. Yeah. So how do you decide? Is it how much the person leaning on you? Yeah, so it's very biased and very subjective uh, matter. So contact guard, you're just, you're not even, you don't feel any weight really. You're just hands on. Um, and then minimal, moderate, maximum, you as a caregiver, if you can estimate, I don't know. It's just very subjective, I guess. <laughs> um, do you guys have a better answer? Uh, it, it, and as a team, if, if you say, you know, we're going to use the lift for anybody that's more than minimal, which is kind of where we're at now, that um, you write in their plan minimal as part of the plan. Does and that make sense? That's After awesome. your assessments and evaluations, yeah. you'll discuss and agree upon a level of assistance. And that also varies based on um, the individual's weight, too. So if you have a heavier individual, for someone like me who's not as strong as somebody like Tim or Paolo over there, and Kevin. <laughs> so you, based on your physical strength as well as the individual's weight and their assistance level. Uh, so standby assist with verbal cues and coaching for safety. Again, no contact is made. You're within an arm's length away from the individual. And your cues can range from very specific, step by step, to very general. So in this picture, for example, if she's getting off the toilet and walking to the sink, my very general cue can just be get up slowly and let's move to the sink. But for very specific, you can have her scoot forward, lean nose over her toes, push through her arms if she has something to push on, and push through your legs. And then you can even talk about the weight shifting while they're walking and everything like that. So you can get very specific or just very general, and that's all on a very individualized basis, which we can assist you with as well. Uh, this is just another example of standby um, contact guard assist. So Amory is in this picture, and this is a great way to get that five to 10 minutes of activity per day if they're standing at the sink washing dishes, being active in whatever way that they can be. So very general, again, could just be something like widen your feet so you have a better base of support and very specific she can go into the specific weight shifting from side to side or specific reaching for the cupboards and cueing that way and then again very general for going to sit down slowly sit down feel the chair behind you and then very specific you can go feel the chair with your legs and then reach back for the armrest. Always want to reach back before you sit down so the individual kind of knows where they're at in their seat that they're going to. For a sideline to sit transfer, so a lot of times this is coming, you can go off the couch or um, a lot of times off of their bed as well. The first thing that you want to do, you want gravity to assist you in any way possible. So you're going to push their legs off of the edge of the couch or the bed or whatever they're on. And then that way they can kind of do that little pivot or lever as well. So their feet are assisting them just by the weight of their legs being pulled down opposite of the direction that they want to go. Um, and you as the caregiver, you're going to stabilize at their waist or 
leg and then you're also going to have another hand under their trunk so you're kind of just doing almost like a seesaw pattern um, and then of course you're having the individual assist you as much as they can so they're pushing off with their hand as well and you always want to be a team with the individual so counting to three and then both of you giving all of your effort that you can on the count of three well, the individual is all of the effort and the caregiver as much as they need. So sit to stand from the front. Uh, very, very important to never let the individual grab around your neck. There's been so many injuries that can be prevented if the individual does not grab your neck. Um, if they do, they can pull your whole body, their whole, foot, whole head <laughs> forward, injure. There's a lot of little muscles in your neck that you can strain. Um, so that's very, very key not to let that happen. So you can have like the picture shows either on your shoulders or around your waist or however they're comfortable. If they have something else to grab onto, that's good too. And then again, working as a team, counting to three and then pushing through the legs. Um, in this picture, she's also demonstrating blocking her knees. So if you have an individual who has a little bit decreased strengthen their legs, you can block their knees so their knees don't buckle on you and they fall again. And then from the side, so I kind of already described a little bit of this sit to stand transfer, but you always want them to scoot forward on the chair first and then you can lean nose over your toes and we'll show this as well. Um, and then push through their arms and their legs at the same time. And if they have a gait belt on, it's great for you as the caregiver because you can grab onto something stable that's not going to move. Uh, their clothing can be loose and slippery, and so you want something that you can actually grip around. And then transferring sit to stand at a walker. So it's the same kind of method of scooting forward on the chair, except this time you're going to have one hand on the chair and one hand on the walker. It's very important as well for this one to never have both of their hands on the walker. The walkers are not made for that type of stability. So if they're pulling the walker towards them, that walker is going to fall and then they're going to fall as well. Um, so always push off the stable surface of the chair arm or wherever you're sitting. And then once you're standing, you stand at the walker, get your checks and balances, so make sure they're not lightheaded or dizzy, and then you can start walking after that. So hands-on assistance for walking with a gait belt. So using a gait belt, again, like I said, they're great. So you have something to hold on to. Um, if the individual sways at all, you can kind of stabilize their balance and study them in that direction. Yeah? Can I ask a gait belt question? Mm -hmm. uh, people get all caught up in the gait belt thinking like, oh, you have to have a PTE belt before you're allowed to use a gait belt. You have to have a doctor's order. And yet to me, a gait belt, rather than people grabbing their belts, grabbing mm -hmm. their weights with their hands, do you really, is it, is it So that, that question would be specific to the agency. Um, I'm sure that most agencies have a rule in place of whether they do need that PTE eval to suggest it first and buy it. Go ahead. There's also some issues with gate belts because sometimes they're used as a restraint. Uh, and that's like, like when you're out in the community, if, if a person has a tendency to be a runner, like elopement is a concern. Then you, we got to involve like the behavioral health department if we're using it to hold on to them. Uh, that's an issue, but I mean, I think of it purely for physical assistance. And that, like yeah. Stephanie says, it would be per agency. And can I add something too? Yeah. The other thing is, it should be written in their plan somewhere that they may need a gate belt. Um, there's different types of straps and stuff that we may use. As long as stuff's written in the plan and it's agreed by the team, unless it's something very aversive, then it would be okay to use. Okay. <laughs> I accidentally turned it off. All right, um, and like Paolo was saying, with a gate belt, if you're talking just the steadiness of it, you definitely don't want to pull on it at all. You want them to be able to walk as freely as they would without it. Um, it's just for you as the caregiver and the individual to increase your safety and kind of balance them a little bit better. Um, another thing with walking that I forgot to mention, I like to stay to the side and a little bit behind the individual as well. That's just a personal preference. Um, 
I feel like from the side and just a tad behind, you're able, if they fall backwards, you can easily adjust. If they fall forward, you can easily adjust that way as well. So for stand pivot transfers, a stand pivot transfer is just when you're going from one surface to the next, the individual is able to bear weight um, and assist you as they're able to. Um, go ahead, did you have a question? No, <laughs> thought you had a question. Um, oh. So for the stand pivot, you're going to uh, work as a team again, and then you're going to block their knees and kind of just rotate your body. So body mechanics are key, especially during this transfer, any transfer that you're physically assisting the individual. So the five key points of body mechanics that I got, want you guys to remember, we're going to start at the bottom, is having an increased base of support, so at least shoulder width apart. And I also like to stagger my feet a little bit because that just gives you a little bit more control and stability. Uh, the second one would be lifting with your legs. So you're always going to bend your knees instead of bending at your back or just reaching with your arms. So really use your legs. Those are the strongest muscles that you guys have. The third one would be to activate your core. So pretending like you're either sucking your belly button in or somebody is about to punch you in the stomach so you really squeeze your tummy. And then the third or the fourth one would be not twisting at your trunk. So if you're ever going to turn, you want to really just move your feet or pivot instead of twisting your trunk. You have a lot of different muscles. And the picture that was up there earlier with the, the back bones um, really showed you the difference when you turn and all the stress on your back that way. And then the fifth one would be keeping the load or weight or individual, whatever you're lifting, close to your body. Um, so if you're reaching out here, you're really putting a lot of more stress on your arms. If they're right next to you and close to your body, you're using all of your muscles to work together that way. So for the stand pivot, I'm actually going to demonstrate this one with another chair, if you want to come. So you always want to set up your environment before you do any type of transfer to your advantage. So if Carol's sitting here, her right side is her good side, so we're going to try to transfer to the right. Um, if it's next to the bed, get the wheelchair as close to the bed as possible. If it's a different toilet, get the wheelchair as close to the toilet as possible. <laughs> I'll try to scream. So I'm going to start with just blocking her knees. If she has one knee that buckles more so than the other, perfect timing. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to get my foot in front of her foot, blocking her foot, so she can't slide forward. Once we go to stand, she's not going anywhere. Um, her knees are not going to buckle because I'm blocking her knees as well. And then I'm going to actually scoot her forward on the chair first. So go ahead and just scoot. If you need to help with that, help them as they need. And then she's going to put, again, her hands on my shoulders, not around my neck. And then I'm just grabbing behind her and kind of scooping her up as we go. So on the count of three, one, two, and three. And you saw how I didn't twist my trunk. <laughs> I didn't twist my trunk at all. I just pivoted with my legs. Um, and Carol didn't even have to stand all the way up. So. I'm sorry, can you hear me better now? OK. <laughs> um, so Carol didn't have to stand all the way up. We just pivoted as much as we needed to. So stand as able, and then she's assisting as she can too. OK. For repositioning up and down in bed or side to side, you're going to be yeah, just <laughs> um, on a, a sheet or on a bed or even the hover mat that we saw earlier. That was the first time I saw it. But anything underneath that you can assist the individual with. Two people are going to be on both sides. And you generally want to be where the mass of their body weight is, so around their waist area or their hips. And then you're going to roll the sheet up as much as you can so the sheet is right next to that individual. And again, keeping your body mechanics in mind, you're going to be as close to them as possible bending your legs with a good base of support and then work as a team one person be the leader and count to three and then when you count to three you're going to move at the same time not twisting your body using your legs to move does that make sense 
Okay. Um, and a lot of people say flowering with falls. Everyone's natural instinct is just to try to catch the person and stop them from falling. But you want to go against that natural instinct because if you just try to reach out and grab them, you're going to end up injuring yourself and then the individual is still going to fall and everyone's going to be hurt instead. Um, so your goal as the caregiver is to control the fall to the floor. So if um, you're walking with them, and then they start falling. Sometimes you can either just give them that extra stability and then they regain their balance so they don't end up falling. But if they're falling down, you're controlling, using your body mechanics again, so base of support, um, using your legs, so bending at the knees instead of, your, instead of your back and your trunk, activating your core, keeping them close to you as you lower them to the floor and uh, not twisting. So as they fall, you're going to lower down as best they can, and slowly as they can. So your, your job is to control the fall to prevent any injuries. You're not stopping it from happening. And I'm actually going to show that one too. So if they're walking, you want a gait belt on. <laughs> this is going to be huge on you. Oh my God. <laughs> Let's see if it, it'll tighten. We should have tightened it before. <coughs> so another thing I didn't mention was using a gate belt. You want it to be snug, but not too snug. So you want at least like four fingers to get underneath of it. You don't want your whole arm fitting in it, but you still want them to have some space to breathe. <laughs> Good. Okay, so Carol and I are just walking. She just needs a little bit more support, and then she goes to fall. So I'm going to hold on to the gate belt and bring her nice and close to me. And if I can, if it's somebody that I know has decent amount of trunk support and they can regain their balance. I'm going to lower to my knee and then I'll call someone else in to grab a chair so we can easily transfer her from my knee to my chair. Because right now, you can go ahead and sit. So, <laughs> so she's not doing anything right here. I'm just on my knee. I'm not even really doing anything either. Uh, go ahead and stand up. And then the next one would be all the way to the floor. If it's someone a little bit heavier and you can't get them to your knee. So we're falling. So I'm just going to control as best I can, use my legs, and then get her to the floor. Does that make sense? So I'm kind of letting her fall. I'm just controlling it so she doesn't get injured. <clears throat> so if they're falling forward, go ahead and fall. And I just get where I am, and then use your legs to kind of block her from getting forward. And then going down. Any other oh, tips or tricks from PTs? Okay. All right, so I'm going to pass it back to Anne Marie, and she's going to talk a little bit more about equipment for when they're not as independent and need a little bit more than a gate belt. <laughs> 